Hello, it's the Great Canadian Bagel here coming to you with the next update to the Canadian Federal Election Forecast series. So, we are going into the last two weeks of the election here. We've had one French debate. Uh, I believe the next French debate is in three days on the 8th, so that's Wednesday. And then we have the English language debate on Thursday. So this is debate week, so don't really expect much traditional campaigning this week because most of the party leaders are likely going to be spending their time debate prepping because the debates are everything. At least for the parties that are invited to them. Because we have some weird archaic rules. Actually, archaic's the wrong word because uh, the, these rules are new because the debate commission's only was created in, I think, 2016. But we have stupid debate commission rules where they just look at the polling in the first week of the campaign to decide the debates, which is dumb because you get situations like the People's Party where in raw polling, they're currently polling neck and neck with the Bloc, around four and a half-ish percent, maybe five-ish, depending on the poll. And they're not being invited to the party because, or to the debates because at the first week of the election, they were polling around three and a half. And the minimum was four, which is exceedingly stupid. We're going to decide who gets to go to the debates before people have really looked at what the parties are asking. Because the first week of polling is basically, how do people feel knowing there's an election, but not knowing anything about the parties? What their platforms are, who what their leaders are saying. So it's dumb. But for the parties who were invited, this is make or break. So like Blunt, Blanchett and the Bloc, they've lost a bit of ground in Quebec. And if we pop over to this, you can see here, they're about 6.7 today. But uh, 6.7 is significantly less. I believe it's almost an entire percentage point less than their last result. They're losing ground principally the NDP and the Conservatives in this part of Quebec. Though some of the suburbs around Montreal are competitive with the Liberals. Though they're competitive but they're really close and right now they're in the block column but they flop back and forth between the Liberals and the block column. So right now they're in the block column and yesterday they were in the Liberal column. So going back and forth. So Blanchett, he really needs to sell in this French debate to Quebecers that he can represent Quebecers better than the Conservatives and Liberals. Singh needs to basically sell to progressive voters that Trudeau is a fake progressive, and if you want progressive policies, you need to vote for Singh and the NDP. O'Toole... No, we'll skip O'Toole for a second. Trudeau has to go in, and he has to basically pick one of those three leaders. He can't really do two of them. If he splits his flyer on two of them, I think he's going to lose, or it's not going to be as effective. Basically, pick one of those leaders and curb stomp them. He needs to pick them up by the throat and choke them out on stage and watch everyone see them Trudeau destroy this person. And obviously, I'm being a bit hyperbolic here, but... Trudeau needs to basically gut the NDP or gut the bloc in Quebec, win almost all Montreal suburbs, maybe some of a Sherbrooke area, take all the NDP seats in like BC maybe or the rest of them in Ontario. That would basically just destroy the NDP as a party, mind you. Or he needs to go and try to scoop up Ontario seats back from the Conservatives, maybe some in BC. That's his only hope of winning here. What I expect he's going to do is he's going to try to punch O'Toole. So far, at least in the first French language debate, it doesn't really look like any of the attacks, any of the punches landed, because they're reiterating things that have already been, like, pretty much debunked or um, declared as a created, like, shown to be a non-issue, such as the abortion thing. Trudeau or O'Toole doesn't want to do anything on it. So, I mean, maybe if he keeps punching O'Toole on that, he, the O'Toole might lose the right wing of the Conservative Party. But they're not going to vote Liberal. And the right wing Conservative Party largely 
would lo- reduce their vote share, but it's not going to really impact a lot of the seat projections because a lot of the right wing of the parties in Alberta, Saskatchewan, in very deep blue regions. So he loses them to People's Party, maybe, and eh, good for People's Party. Bad for the Conservatives, but doesn't really affect the election that much. Though that said, I doubt at this point any anyone who is uh, pro-life in the Conservative Party is not going to be driven off by whatever O'Toole says. I'd be surprised. So I, I feel like those attacks are just going to be, be in nothing. It might convert some NDP voters to Trudeau, but not many. I don't think so. Trudeau's punch is on housing. Not housing, sorry. Um, medical care and O'Toole wanting to let the provinces decide if they want to do private, have it private alongside their public system. That's just going to fall 100% flat. Polling after poll shows that the vast majority of Canadians support private alongside public. So, I mean, that has a losing proposition. Like a ledger poll had it 71% support a private and a public system. So two at the same, like having both. As long as everyone has universal coverage, they don't care how much private there is. Only 20% wanted zero private. So if you're punching for 20% of the electorate, which is probably almost entirely already in the NDP liberal camp, who are you punching for? A losing issue. And it might actually drive away swing votes, liberal conservative swing voters to conservatives, which would be funny. Does it be a self defeating punch? Punching yourself in the face. Step on a rake, I think is a more proper term there. And then the last big one he's trying to hit is guns. And again, I don't think anyone pro gun control was ever going to vote conservative. Maybe there's a few of them. But I think it's probably zero. And those on the fence about it, assuming O'Toole doesn't eat his foot on stage, I don't think they're going to be convinced because, I'll be very honest here, things like the OIC last year are completely useless and will not do a single thing. So... Being against that is just good. You should be against a bad government policy, but that's really o- Trudeau's mating lines of attacks. I don't really know what else he can throw at O'Toole. And this really underscores how bad this election is for Trudeau. He doesn't really have much avenue anymore. So, but we'll see. Maybe he has something in the bag that no one's seen yet, but I'm doubtful. And then now for O'Toole. He just kind of has to survive. He's the front runner. Maybe he can kick Trudeau pretty hard and cement the victory, but he doesn't need to. He's going to win right now. He has a plus 10 seat lead, and he's... At no point has he lost ground in my model since, I think, the election started. I'm not an exhaustive check on that, but he's really not lost any ground at any point during the election. some points, he's had a day-over-day delta of zero. But that's fine. Delta Zero is fine when you're the front runner. <laughs> well, anyways, let's get into the regional changes. So the Liberals picked up another seat, or the seat back up in Alberta. I think that's Edmonton Millwoods, or maybe it's Edmonton Center. I don't know. It's one of those, those two. Depends on the day. Some of them can flip back to Liberal. Some can flip back to the cons- or they can flip back to the Conservative. It's it's neither here nor there. It just kind of exists. Ontario NDP lost two seats to Liberals. I believe that is Toronto area. Davenport is one of them. I don't recall the other one. And the Conservatives picked up two seats from the Liberals, one of which is Kitchener Centre, because I'm sure anyone watching this has heard the Liberal candidate Kitchener Centre, who was has been accused of, I think, four accounts of sexual harassment of employees, has, resu- or has uh, stepped down and is not running anymore. Ergo, there's no Liberal running in that riding. Therefore, the Conservatives are basically getting a win by default. <laughs> Maybe the NDP candidate can pull up like from left field, but I'm doubtful. So, looks like 
to solid two. I'm not sure where the other was considered a seat. It's some. It's somewhere. I think it's GTA. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's somewhere, but I think it's GTA. I haven't checked. Sadly, I don't have like a good riding map, like 338 Canada. I did not have that. I was working on it. It did not get set up for the election. I've not had time during the election to work on it. It is what it is. I have all the writings. It's just re looking at them by hand. Like numbers on a spreadsheet is a lot harder than the map. So this is the big one here. New Brunswick now has a slight lead for the conservatives and popular vote. And they've not just picked up a seat, St. John's Rothsay. So the only seats the Liberals are holding here are Moncton, uh, this this one here, and the two Acadian ridings over here. I know their names, but not where, well, I can't, I don't recall the names. I'm sorry, New Brunswickers. It is what it is. Uh, Conservatives have also picked up Ed, Egmont and PEI, and they've picked up Bonavista, Turin, there's another part of that, but regardless, this riding right here in Newfoundland from the Liberals. Though uh, Egmont and Bonavista in Newfoundland are very close, and they've been kind of dancing back and forth between Liberal and Conservative columns right now, mostly because of the hilarious volatility and polling Atlantic Canada's having. I expect significant amounts of the error in my model 338 Canada's model, other pe other comparable models, is going to happen in Atlantic Canada because the polling is all over the place. Prime example, uh, two days ago, Nanos had a plus 15 lead in Atlantic Canada for the Conservatives. Today, it's plus two. So like, and that's indicative of every single pollster. Same things happen with Main Street. Same things happen with Ecos. The 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 variance poll over poll is so high in Atlantic Canada. It is comical. I have no idea what how all of these pollsters are pulling so much volatility here. As someone from Nova Scotia, like, I think there is movement on the ground, but it's not like within the same week you can have wildly different results like going from a plus 10 liberal to plus 10 conservative back to plus 10 liberal rate like that's that stuff is actually happening in the sub samples and it's ludicrous like why is why there's no way the region is that volatile on a week to week basis on a day to day basis this is what is wrong with your sampling metrics? I think there's going to be a lot of error here. There could be a conservative sweep. There could be a liberal sweep. This is my best middle path <laughs> that I'm going here. We'll see. Uh, some other things to note. The Saskatchewan's almost in this dark blue ter territory again. And Ontario's almost in this dark red here. Or medium red? This is medium red, I think. But... As we, actually, we can see here. So it is exactly 40 today, but yesterday was 39.8. Then it was exactly 40. Then it was exactly 40 and 39.9 and 39.4. So like, I'm not comfortable putting it back in the dark red column until it's above, uh, above 40 consistently for like three days or so. We'll see. Whereas you look at the last couple days, the Conservatives have been leading or tied in New Brunswick, so that's why I switched that column here. I will also note, because we are going into the debate period, I... So, the way a lot of these models work is you have a beta factor, and the beta factor basically controls how the decay is with the poles, i.e. the higher your beta the more recency bias your polling model has. Since we're in the debate period, in the last two weeks stretch, might have increased the beta field, so that the results are likely going to be much more, spread of the model are going to be much more volatile now. Still less volatile than some models, because my model has inherent anti-volatility nuts and bolts to it. But it is going to make it more volatile. That's why, for example, the People's Party lost 2.7 support. It's not that 
they're polling 2.7 lower. I should also note that ECOS, which is uh, generally pulls PPC higher, is not included in today's sample because they haven't published it yet, and I do not have time to publish the video after the, the ECOS sample has been revealed, so that would probably push this up a bit more. But for example, though, People's Party didn't actually lose 2.7 support per se. Like, they're not doing worse in the polls per se, it's just mostly the ECOS polls not been included and recency bias has increased. That's why you see liberals and conservatives jumped a bit, and you dropped a bit because, again, there's more recency bias. Will this make a better result? I don't know. But the most movement is going to happen in the least the last two weeks. So this is my editorial decision. If it's wrong, and I get my model wrong, this might be why. We'll see. I have confidence in this, though. I'm feeling pretty good. You look at, um, we'll go back to this because it'll be easier to see. You look at like 338 Canada's model, he has the Liberals down four and the Conservatives down four and the NDP up four, or sorry, combined eight or something like that. So we're pretty close. We're technically within margin of error of each other. I pull the two main parties, or project the two main parties with a higher vote share than he does, mostly because I try to model strategic voting. I do not think his model does, or else I don't know why his NDP numbers are so high. I think it, I think he has like NDP at like 34 or something. There's, there's no way in my mind that NDP are getting 34 seats. Only way the NDP under Singh is going to go that well as if Trudeau falls, like his campaign crumbles in the last two weeks. But projecting two weeks forward is almost impossible, so I I just doubt that. But we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. I doubt it, but maybe I am. So, uh, that's pretty much the overall state here. We are going to have the debates this week. I don't know when my next video will be, because... Might, might just be Thursday again. I don't, I'm not 100% certain because it depends on when the debates actually occur. Or, sorry, not when they actually occur. It depends if I want to try to include the debate polls or before them. I might dump the model the date before the French poll and update again, but we'll, we'll see. Stay tuned. There's definitely going to be one next during the week, but I'm not sure exactly when I want to time it. But anyway, otherwise, if you uh, liked the video, please like, share, subscribe, comment below what you think Trudeau or the other party leaders are going to do in the debates, what their strategies are going to be. Do you even think Trudeau can pull this out? It's looking pretty bad. I'm getting doubtful. But he has one advantage. He's still competitive in Ontario and Quebec. So we'll see. But it's getting dicey. And specifically, if you're from Atlanta, Canada, comment to me if you know anyone who's like changing their voting opinions on a daily basis. Because it feels like that's what pollsters think we're doing here. I don't know anybody who's changing their voting intention on a daily basis. I know a bunch of people who are undecided and a bunch of people who are decided. No one who's flip-flopping day to day. And that's what the polls are suggesting we're doing. So, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. And, hope you enjoyed the video.